Welcome to the Glorious Wolf Facebook Live presentation. I'm Kay Witt. Thanks for joining me. If you're here, say hello so I can make sure that uh, everything's working like it's supposed to. And we'll get started. Hi, Diane, can see you. And Kay Wells from Florida, welcome. And Roberta is watching, so let's get started. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kay Witt. I've been teaching pastel on velour for about eight years and I'm broadcasting from my studio in Strasburg, Virginia. This class, was going to be my workshop for this month, and I was going to teach it this weekend, and that was before COVID-19. So a lot of us are spending a lot of time at home right now, so I thought you might enjoy having this workshop available to you, and you can paint it right in your very own home. So we're going to work from 1.30 to 3.30 today, and Wednesday and Friday. And here's how I'd like to work this because I'm going to have to turn my camera around so you can see my wolf. I won't be able to see your questions. So if you would leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section, then Wednesday before we start painting, I will answer your questions the best I can. Now some of you um, have the packet information and some of you don't. So if, if you don't, that's okay, just take notes because I'm gonna tell you everything that I'm doing. So before we, I turn my um, board around, I'm going to be, or my camera around, excuse me, I'm gonna be working on gray velour paper because it's my favorite surface and it makes the most beautiful animals. And we're gonna use light gray uh, color. So I'm gonna show you a piece that I have here. So here's my piece of gray velour, and I have mounted it on a board to make it more stable, but you don't have to mount yours. You can use it just like it is, just like the paper is. And we're going to use a combination of new pastel sticks and uh, Rembrandt sticks, which are a little bit longer than that before you cut them up. Let me see if I can find one. Well, they have paper, they look about like this. So they're a little softer than the new pastels. And I'm gonna use a couple of pencils too. But just take notes, and um, if you're painting along with me, that is great. I wanna see how, how it works out for you. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you was that there are uh, a whole section of videos uh, available at my website which is kwit.com slash video, V-I-D-E-O, no S. And it takes you to uh, a section of videos, but there are some free ones called An Introduction to Pastel, which teaches you, goes into more in depth about how I use the pastels on the velour, how to prepare the velour, and the different strokes I'm gonna use. Hi, Holly. So I'm gonna turn my camera around. We're gonna get started. And uh, like I said, if, you, if you're tuning in late, if you have questions or comments, because I, once I turn the camera around, I won't be able to see them, leave them in the uh, comment section and I will answer your questions on Wednesday. So now I'm gonna turn my camera around. And you get to see my studio a little bit before it comes up. Let's see. There we go. Now here's my wolf. My wolf is already drawn out on velour paper. And I did that with 9B graphite pencil. 
and I, I traced the wolf off. Um, there was a diagram in your packet, a drawing, this is mine, and I transferred it with carbon paper onto my velour paper. So I've drawn a little bit of it in. And so after I transfer it, this is a very important step. And I always tell my classes that you don't want to skimp on this step. You want to um, take your time with it. So I go back over my drawing and I make sure that I have all the lines in that I'm going to need for my painting. And I usually spend a lot of time doing the drawing part. So he's pretty much drawn in. And the graphite doesn't um, take up two through the paper. So you can um, do as much of this as you want to, actually. The um, size of this piece of paper that I have is nine by 12 inches. This is a, a, a not super small. I think it's just the right size for this particular study. I think it's so important as artists, we have our art that helps us get through these rough times in our lives. And we're coming together as a community to help each other and share ideas. I love to paint. Okay, so I've done about all the, the drawing I'm really gonna do. I actually started ahead of you and to get mine drawn off. But now I wanna make sure that <clears throat> some of the elements on here are gonna, we want them to show through layers of pastel that we're gonna put on. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take my 6B charcoal pencil and I'm gonna go over the eyes and some of the darks in the ear and the nose so that they're going to show up when I add pastel. So I've already gone over this eye. You can probably see that. And I've also marked in ever so lightly his eyebrow. be really um, careful and make sure I get it drawn just right. We're going to take our time. Get that rim of the eye. Mark the pupil. 
Now I'm gonna use my white charcoal pencil. Put a highlight on the rim. Highlight in the eye. And also on the other eye. Put in these little moisture marks that are gonna give life to our wolf. Now in the ears, Darken these little areas inside the center of the ear. And a little bit up here. other ear. Now when I use my charcoal pencil I don't use it like this. I use it at an angle to my paper, probably 30 degree angle. I don't use it on its point, so I'm using more of the side of my charcoal pencil. Now when you use a charcoal pencil, you have to be careful that you don't put it in places you don't want it or you don't put too much of it because it's not going to come off very easily or be covered up very easily. So we want to make sure we're putting it just where we want it. I think this phase is important and you should take your time doing it. I'm, I'm using a 9 by 12 sheet of velour paper for this project. You could make it bigger if you wanted to, um, but I think that would be like too large. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit here. Now before I do this nose, Going back to the white charcoal pencil. So the white charcoal pencil, I'm gonna use it to add, I uh, used it to mark these places in the eye. Let me get my pupil a little darker here. So I can use this to add and mark where some white hairs are gonna be, for instance. And I also wanna use, when I use this, I wanna use it at 30 degree angle to the paper. And you don't have to press really hard. 
it'll show up. So I'm going to add some white hairs in the ear, and when we put pastel over it, it's going to show through those layers. I'm going to put a few here. A few over the eye and under the eye. A few over this eye. Put a few hairs in this here. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but if you have to leave or you can only stay with us a little while, the uh, replay will be available right here on Facebook. I think it archives them and they'll be here for you to see later. Okay, so I think, well, let's see. Let's put a few white hairs over here as well. Let's work on his nose. Well, before I do that, I think I'll add a few more black hairs over here. Uh, let me ask this question to those of you who are watching. Are you having any focus problems? We may need to stop and start over if there's just a bad video connection. So anyway, um, I'm going to put in his mouth. these nostrils. Yeah, I'm going to kind of shade them in. Okay. Um, now I'm going to use my white pencil to add Highlight underneath the nostril, on the top, and over on this side as well. A little bit around the edge. Then I'm going to use my pencil on its side and just lightly go over all of this. Put in a couple of little dark hairs that are here too. Okay. Catch the corner of his mouth. And 
I think that's about all the drawing I'm going to do. Oh, one other area. This part down here, the fur, meets with the background. So I want to make sure that I put some white hair here. I'm gonna put a little bit, I'm gonna put a white edge here on the bottom of the lip. And then I'm gonna draw in a few white hairs. And then when we put in our background, which won't be until probably Friday, um, the edge of the wolf is gonna show up. So that's important, or whatever animal you're painting. And we'll put a couple on the outside of his face. I want to tell you about this wolf. He lives at a wolf park in Indiana. And this picture was taken when he was just about a year old. So um, they call them yearlings, which makes sense. But he, uh, he hasn't quite grown into his ears yet, which I think is kind of cool. So he's a teenager. And his name is Manny, which I think is kind of cute. So let's see, is there any other place I want to mark to make sure that I'm using my pencil this time? Okay, so that's what I like to do when I'm getting going is to get everything marked, get the top of this ear. And that looks, that looks good. Now if I have a good drawing, it's going to give me a better uh, chance of a good painting, an excellent painting. So now we're going to start the under layers of our painting. Now, to do that, I always create my under layers with uh, Rembrandt pastels. And they are the bigger sticks that I showed you before. I break them in half and sand them. And so the first uh, base coat color we're gonna use is this. This is 707.7. Rembrandt Gray. This is a nice medium gray color. It's kind of on the um, darker side. And I'm going to give the whole wolf a base coat. Now, I'm gonna avoid the eyes and the nose when I do this. That way we can get the color just fine, Eating nice and even. So I'm gonna, I've sanded one side, so I'm gonna use this flat side and I'm going to lightly add a coat. Now when I mean lightly, I'm letting the paper, the fabric of the paper pull off the color. So I'm not pushing hard, I'm just letting it glide across the paper. Don't worry if it doesn't cover it entirely because we'll be adding more layers. But you can see that the white things that I grew, drew in earlier are showing through, right? So I'm gonna put this down a little bit further down here, but we're working mainly on the face today. Now I can turn it up on its end. It really doesn't matter if you go over his nose because we're gonna have lots of color in there anyway, but. Let me get this uh, ear.
Now, so I have that gray in. It's nice medium gray color. We may have to add some other gray to get it a little darker later on. Over here on the side, I've got a little bit of um, gritty stuff from the pastel stick, so I'm gonna blow that off with my blower. Now the next step, we're gonna need to add some brown because these uh, wolves have uh, three colors. They have uh, a brown, they has black, white, and brown color in them. So I wanna add a brown. So I'm gonna use a nice red brown, which is, in this case, we're gonna use Rembrandt 411.3 Burnt Sienna. So here's my Rembrandt Burnt Sienna stick. I also have it already sanded, but I don't wanna put this all over. I wanna put it where I see brown. Now in this wolf, I'm gonna make sure there's nothing, I think I'll sand the end of it. There's nothing on the end of it. So I'm gonna add some to his ears. Get one that's a little smoother. Very lightly add some brown. Put some brown around his eyes. Now, if you're following along um, from the packet, there's a, a diagram on the first page that shows you where I'm gonna put it. I see a little bit of brown here as well. I'm staying out of his eye. There's also some on the top of his nose. And the key word here is light touch. Let's get this ear. And a little bit. down on this side of his face. For this, I'm gonna turn it on the flat side. And just add a light coat. Put a little bit on his mouth. Hi, Kelly Waters. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Louise. Can't say hello to everybody because that. I can't see them all, but thank you for coming. So 
that's about all I'm gonna do with the brown because we're gonna deal with this side of the wolf later. I think I might uh, put a little brown up in here. Now let's go a little bit darker and I'm gonna use Mars Violet, which in uh, Rembrandt is 538.3. And so the darker brands are going to be on this side of the wolf and up under his chin. Now the other thing you can use if you don't um, have this color, and the other thing I forgot to say at the beginning was you can substitute colors, whatever works for you. Excuse me, let me get a little drink of water from talking. So I have 353 Cordovan, which is a new pastel, which is almost identical to the Rembrandt 538.3. So I want to, I'm gonna use the 538.3 to go under his bottom lip here to define that area. And then this area. Of the spur. Where it's a little bit darker. And it's gonna be a little darker down here too. But we're gonna add more as we go through the process. Now if I was gonna use the Cordovan, which we'll be using more of that later, I sharpen mine. Um, and there are also videos on how I do that. I could use it to go under here like this. But all these layers are very light layers, okay? That way we can add more color. We want his head to come forward and we want it to be distinct from his neck. And so as we go along, we'll add more and more. I'm gonna use, uh, this is easier it's, it to apply in larger areas than the new pastel. Here again, I'm very, I'm just lightly touching the paper with this. Make it a little bit darker here. I think I'm going to put a little more brown in these ears. Okay. I like the way that looks. Right? Okay. Now, let's really add some life to our wolf. We're gonna work on his eyes. Now I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a bit closer to these eyes. If there's a problem with the picture, you guys let me know, but um, Sometimes it's not as clear when you zoom in, so I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, now, wolves do not have blue eyes, contrary to the internet. And uh, 
but they don't. It's very rare that they have blue eyes. Uh, there are a couple that do, but mostly they have either amber eyes or green gray eyes. So what I thought would be nice, if you like, um, I can paint one eye amber and one eye green. So I'm gonna start with the, I had painted so many amber eyes that I really wanted to do a, a green eye. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. I have um, several new pastels. I have a 305 spruce blue that I'm going to use. Uh, 229 black and uh, let's see we're gonna use 263 Indian red and we're all gonna also gonna use some green so for green I have 308 palm green 348 endive green and 268 uh, which is light sap green so I have quite a bit of colors I'm going to use so I'm going to lay them over here on the side <coughs> now one of the best ways to get a nice rich black is to uh, Go underneath your black with blue or purple. Now Rembrandt makes this great 305 spruce blue, which I use in every painting. So I'm going to outline my eye with spruce blue. Do the rim. Now we put, remember we put the um, white charcoal pencil down here. So I'm going to just color blue right over that, and that's gonna make that a light blue. Now I'm gonna do this for both eyes. Coloring around that rim. And then I'm going to lightly color over it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the black 229 over top. And uh, I didn't sharpen mine, so let me sharpen mine up real quick. So now I'm going to carefully Also going to put in pupil. Now 
I got my pupil a little irregular. So to fix that, I'm gonna just dab it off with my kneaded eraser. I love kneaded erasers. So I can twist it into any shape and just take that off. There. Okay, so we're gonna make, that's a little wonky on this side too. So we're gonna make this eye, the left eye green, and the right eye, um, we're going to make uh, amber so that you'll know how to do both eyes. How about that? So we're gonna base coat this iris with 308 Palm Green, which is this color. It's a medium value color green. So I'm just going to color like I was coloring in a coloring book with the green. So that's my first color I'm gonna use. And now I need a shadow. We wanna add a shadow under the eyelid. I think that's the biggest way that people kind of mess up with their, um, when they're doing eyes, whether it's on uh, dogs or, or people, there is a shadow cast by the upper lid. And if you don't get that shadow in, it's uh, just not going to look realistic. So I'm taking my 353 quarter then, and I'm just going to add a little bit of color. We may have to go darker, but for right now, I'm gonna just add some darker color up under there. That already gives it some dimension. Now I'm going to add some more color to the eye, which this time I'm gonna use 263 Indian Red. Uh, in most eyes, I found, and you, you observe them yourself and see what you find, but there's most color is around the pupil. So I'm going to add some of this light Indian red around this area. It's also the complement of all the green. And I'm gonna go back with my green and kind of blend it. So it's good to mix a little red with your green now we're going to use um, 268, which is the light sap green on the bottom half of the eye. So this is our middle value. So I'm just lightly adding this color. Now I'm going to darken the pupil because it's kind of disappeared. Now when I, I'm using a light uh, movement and it's very sketchy. You don't want your pupils to be dark, round, black holes. It makes your animal look scary. I also think um, it might need to be a little darker under the eyelid. So I'm gonna lightly take my 229 black and go over that and darken it a little more. I like that. Taking my 263 Indian Red, adding a little more color, just a touch. Now we're gonna add the brightest color we have with the 348 in dive. And this is gonna be right down at the base. And I'm gonna lightly color it up towards the pupil. That looks pretty awesome. Now to finish it, we need a bright light for the catch light. And for that, we're going to use a 211 white. And I usually use one that's been Sharpen to a point, here's one. I have a couple. When we make fur, we use the, the square ends, but when we're gonna do the light in the eye, we use the pointy end.
So I'm going to sharpen it on my sand block. And then I'm going to add it to blow it off. It kind of broke, so I take my blower. Blow away the excess. And then kind of drag it over the center of the eye. And darken the pupil just a little. looks pretty good. The other thing I'm going to do, I don't want um, this to be too prominent, so I'm going to color over it with the black a little more and use my white pencil to highlight these moist areas. There's a secondary highlight over here. I'll put it with the pencil. And I think that uh, looks pretty good. Now, if you wanted to Add a brighter highlight. I think uh, we could use on the rim, we could use 235 blue on that rim. It got a little bit too far over, so I'm going to cover it up. That works too. Now, the bottom of the eye, to get a gray quality, I'm going to use a 700 Carbothello pencil. To make it a green gray eye. We're going to use this pencil later in the fur. Whoops. Wouldn't be live without something strange happening. So now the other eye, let's make the other eye an amber eye. Now for this eye, I'm gonna base coat with 253 Cocoa Brown. These colors are not on your color list, but uh, if you have a, a, any kind of set of new pastels, they'll be there, or substitute colors. So we're gonna have an amber eye. So I'm gonna take the 253 Cocoa Brown and I'm just gonna color just like I was coloring in a coloring book all over the eye. And I'm gonna use the other browns we talked about, the 353 Cocoa Brown. I'll go under the lid. And then I'll add some red brown with the 263 Indian Red. Now you can see I've lost my pupil, so I'll restate my pupil with my 229 black. I just love to paint. Don't you think painting, painting is wonderful. It takes you to, I'm gonna darken this a little more, a place that you just, I can't get to any other place. A place of peace and serenity. I'm gonna darken this edge. A little more. And I'm gonna darken the corner with my black a little more. I love that, that's a beautiful brown eye, but we need to add some accents to it. So what I'm going to do is take um, 266 Pale Vermilion. This is a wonderful color, I love this color. And down at the bottom of the eye, I'm gonna put some light Pale vermilion. And then over that, I'm going to put, I can put either 233 raw sienna, or I can put 207 chrome yellow. So I'm going to put the 207. And it makes the eye glow. Isn't that great? I love this. 
and you can push a little darker, a little harder rather, it doesn't make it darker, and it just makes it brighter. And you could use an orange new pastel, but I've never been able to get it to look like that. I'm gonna darken the pupil a little, and then we're gonna add that highlight. And I'll tell you, give you a little tip on your eyes that I learned from Lisa Ober. The eye is uh, convex. So when the light comes through the eye on this side, where the bright highlight is, it goes out the other side. So this side, down at the bottom, is going to be where the brightest, the second brightest highlight is. So we're gonna put our highlight in here. And I'm going to just pull that across a little bit. I love it. I'm gonna put the white Take a little 235 blue, put down there. Now if you um, don't have a 207 chrome yellow and you do have a 233 raw sienna, you'll get pretty close to the same look. I prefer the, um, the chrome yellow. Now this process that I showed you with the red, we used red, we used uh, 253 cocoa brown for the base coat, and we used these other browns. You can make any brown eye with these colors, um, whether it be uh, human or wolf or dog. I love those colors, they work together. Now, over on my other eye, I think I'm going to punch up the bottom on this side with the end dive just a little bit. I've got a little bit of, uh, here's another way to get stuff off your paper, too. I've got a little piece of broke off pastel. So that's the eyes. So now our wolf has come to life and is watching us. So we're gonna work on this nose uh, next. I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit so we can see the nose. Now the nose, we're gonna do very similar to the eyes. So I'm going to take uh, my 305 Spruce Blue and put in the darks on my nose very carefully. So I'm gonna get these nostrils in. And go underneath. Carefully draw this in. So we're putting this blue down before we put the black. And then I'm just going to color over it. I wanna make sure I have my shape right. This is why I'm doing this. And then I'm gonna color it in with blue. So now we have a blue nose. I'll bet you guys can guess what I'm gonna do um, next. I'm gonna take my 229 black and I'm going to darken these nostrils. And you can see where we put the white pencil before, it shows through. I'm 
not going to go all the way up the top of the nose letter because the light is striking the upper part of the nose. So I'm just going to go up a little and I'm coloring. I'm using my, just like I would color in a coloring book. shape right mm -hmm. I'll do a mouth while I'm down here now let's add some highlights to this nose I have uh, we have the light blue that we used um, in the eyes and also another color I've started using for highlights is 314 um, Old Lilac, which adds a nice pinky color. So I'm going to use the blue, light blue, to hit this side of the, the nose and underneath. And then I'm going to use my old lilac on this side. Just, I love having that variety of color. If I push down a little bit harder, I get a little bit more color off of it. Now, if that's too much, which I kind of think I got a little carried away, I can go back with my um, 305 blue and add color over the top of it. Now to get the nostrils extra, extra dark, I'm going to use my Rembrandt 705 and just put a little bit in there. Now he's looking pretty good. Now I'm going, you can hardly see it, but I'm gonna put it in. There is a division. Um, I'm gonna use my gray that I used for the background. Here we go. And you put a little highlight where the nose leather divides in there. makes it look a little, a little better. So now we've completed our nose. Now, um, I think I want this a little stronger in there. Here we go. Okay, so now we've gotten uh, a long way, actually. I'm gonna back this out. Think. There we go. We're gonna work on these ears. Uh, I might be able to zoom in on the ears too if I move my paper. We could try it. If I move my ears down, let's see. Okay, now. Um, my teacher is Leslie Harrison, and a lot of you know her. And one thing she said one time was, if you start with an ear, you can't really mess up an ear. So we're gonna start there, and we're gonna see how we do. And then we'll go on to the other ear, and that will help us get our feet wet with uh, doing fur, okay? So we're going to need to add more color this year. I'm going to start with the left ear and then work on the right ear. I got to put these hairs in. It's just bothering me. He has no hair here in the center. So 
So we're gonna start in the ear and that'll be a nice safe place for us to start, right? Let me see if I can uh, use a piece of paper to put my hand on. Now, we're going to start with this ear, and we're going to use our um, new pastels. So we're going to use the 353, the 263, and the 229. So what I want to do is darken, wrong one, sorry guys, there it is, 263. So there are areas I want to darken. I think I'm going to start with a 353. Now because I put the white uh, charcoal pencil down, I can see I can see the the pencil stroke, so I know where the direction of the hair is going to go. So that helps me a lot. So I'm going to add this 353. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm having a great time. I love to paint and I have to admit, I've been so caught up with administrative duties and I haven't had the time to put in a painting that I would like to. So I wanna thank you all for joining me. Now I'm using very light pressure This is the edge. We want to make that edge roll. So we want to put darker color on the outside edge of his ear and the inside. So it's going to be lighter in here so that it looks like the ear has some depth there. I'm gonna to switch to my Indian Red. And the reason I changed was because Indian Red has a little more powerful color and the ear gets quite red in here. And what we're doing is building a um, base for the colors. We have to go dark before we can go light, right? Just gonna put a light, 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 light coat over there. Now we need to add some black. It's, I'm just gonna use the point. down here like this. And I can also use this edge. This edge defines the shape of the forehead too. So we wanna be sure. Let me sharpen up my stick. So I have the four flat edges. So 
I'm using my eyes to add little hairs. And I can use a point. Okay, now I want to get a little black edge. Now after we add the background, um, we can pull these little hairs up. There's no point in doing it now because we're gonna cover them up, but So the, this area is very, very dark. And there are little tiny hairs that come up here. I wish you were all here with me, but this is the next best thing. This is, there's two, this is very dark in here. Now um, I can take the end of my new pastel and color it like this, just lightly adding color, getting it darker. Now right in this area, which is the, um, I don't know what to call it except the ear hole where the wolf hears. For that, I'm going to use a black or black, which is the 700.5 Rembrandt. There's my little my little piece, and it's really dark. And this is the blackest black. I could add just a tad of black there. Now let's see if that's as dark as we want to go. With our ear. And I think it is. Okay, now we have everything dark. And you can see, I'm gonna move my paper. See how dark that is compared to the rest of our wolf? Pretty dark. So now let's add some light hairs to our wolf to bring this to life, okay? And I can tell you that the colors that I'm using for this, you can use to paint most any animal, I think, uh, Pretty much, you might have to add a couple of other things. So this is a good basic set of colors. So now I'm gonna use my basic light colors. Now for my lights on my wolf, I'm gonna use 211 white, new pastel, 299 light gray, new pastel, and 276 buff. Now I'm also going to use a 700 light gray Carbarthello pencil. I'm gonna show you an alternate way to do things. I'm gonna use a 105 ivory Carbarthello pencil and my white charcoal pencil. So uh, we, might, uh, we might need our charcoal pencil, black charcoal pencil too, maybe. We'll see if we need it. If we need it, we have it. So I'm gonna show you an alternate way um, to do things because sometimes if you haven't done this before, you're not used to it, um, it's kind of intimidating, but I'm gonna show you the way I do it and then I'm gonna show you a couple of alternative methods to do it. 
Carbothellas are wonderful pastel pencils and they're very affordable. So I'm gonna put these things out of the way, but where I can get them to. So I'm gonna clean up my workspace a little bit, push things out of the way so they're here if I need them. So I'm going to start putting in some hairs. And I'm gonna start with my 276 buff as you can see, it's been sanded flat and has four flat edges. I hold it at a 45 degree angle to my paper. And I can draw short little hairs. You wanna make sure you draw the hair to go in the direction that it grows. And when one side gets dull, you can rotate it so that you can use the other side. Draw these creamy colored little. Now, if this is hard for you or you're not used to it, try your um, 105 ivory pencil. So let me sharpen my pastel by sanding it on the block. Wiping it off. I'm using very light pressure. Now, these, I'm going to use the same um, 276 Now the, uh, the um, hair is kind of uh, turned more towards the gray now. So I'm gonna switch to my 299. Do those fine hairs, barely touching the paper. Now if I push a little harder with my pastel, I can make those hairs a little brighter. So I might want one or two a little brighter. So I push a little harder. And that looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. Now I can switch to my 700 light gray Carbothello and do little hairs if I want. But I really like using this better. So I'm gonna sharpen it. Uh, where's my black? Lost my black. This, I'm gonna pull up, make some short strokes with the edge of my black. that 
it needs to be a little bit darker. So we can go back and we can make it darker if we want to. And just work my way up the ear. And they're short, the hairs get very short up here. So I'll just make little short strokes. And now I'm drawing with the corner of my stick instead of the flat edge. And that enables me to um, draw a fine line. Holly asked a pretty good question about how I know what the number is once it's broken or it's pretty much gone. I, I can tell what it is by looking at it because I've used them for so long, but on a new pastel, here's one that doesn't have a wrapper. Every new pastel has the number engraved on it. So that'll help you. The other way to do that is to make a color chart. When you get your brand new set of new pastels, make a color chart. I still have my original color charts. And then if you have just a little piece left, you can go back and match it to your color chart and you'll know what color it is. So you can order it. Now, the hair is changing direction. So I'm gonna turn my wolf around. So hang on. So I'm gonna turn my wolf there's my ear, upside down. Don't be afraid to turn it around any direction you need it to be. little hairs up here. And I'll use my gray pencil. The hairs in here are short and tiny. Now, you can see that these are pretty much all the same color. The pencil is perfect for this kind of teeny tiny work. I don't want those to all stay gray, so I'm going to put a, um, I'm gonna take my 263 Indian Red and I'm just gonna kind of lightly color over them They'll still show through, but now they're kind of a, a brown instead of a gray. So that worked pretty good. I can pull out a few using the white. But I don't want I don't want everything to show. If everything is prominent, there's no place for the eye to go. Okay? So I'm gonna turn my waffle around now. Well, I'm liking that ear very much. I think I will add some white hairs with my 211. 
Okay, I like that ear. So for now, I'm going to leave that one alone. Let's go work on the other one. I'm gonna move my wolf, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing with this ear that we did with the other one. I think my favorite part about this wolf is he has two different color eyes. <laughs> I do. I think I want to add a couple more hairs over here with my white charcoal pencil. Sometimes you have to just go back and forth till you get it like you want. And if, and often I find this, um, I'm gonna use my black charcoal pencil to pull up some hair. Now on, uh, of course that didn't, this out of your camera range. Let me move my picture. Um, there's going to be white hairs on the whole outside edge of this. I can go ahead and put them in with my white pencil and when we put in the background, they'll show up and then we'll reinforce them later. But he has white fuzzy hairs back here. So I'll go ahead and put those in. Okay, and now we'll move on to that other ear. So I'm gonna use the same colors that I used. And that's 263 New Pastel, Indian Red, 353 Cordovan, 229 Black, and I believe um, I also used the Rembrandt 700 Black to get the dark area of the wolf's ear. So I'm gonna start with the, um, well, the Cordovan down in this area. You see my My white pencil shows up. And I think I'm going to use my black. So I'm going to go back to the sharp edge and add my black hairs. We want this ear to be brown, so I'm going to use the 263 to um, add color in that area. And I want to add 263 is this is a great color. It's really really red, so uh, it kind of corresponds to the. Um, this color of um, Rembrandt that we use, the 411.3 Burnt Sienna. So it's kind of a very similar color. The difference being that the Rembrandt is softer than the 263. A little cordovan and back to the black.
color this area brown. Now, you may, you may ask, why are we putting in all these layers? What is the point of this? Why didn't we just make it all dark in the beginning? Because it's the light layering, the buildup of layers that makes this so beautiful. Combined with the soft uh, paper, it gives you this wonderful effect of fur that I don't think you can get any other way. Besides, if we go slowly, we can always add more. But if we add too much in the beginning, it ruins your picture and you can't, um, you can't go back very easily and recover that. So if I go slow, I can add more. So I'm going to add these black hairs that are down here at the base of the ear. I also want to make sure that I get this whole ear. And there are, there are little random hairs that we will we'll do that when we do the finishing part of the wolf. We'll get those little details. So I'm gonna use the bottom of my 229 black. And then where the, um, the blackest part of his ear, where he hears at, I'm gonna use my Rembrandt. And I can go right over, see how they show up? I did go right over those little white hairs we put in. And they show up very well. Add a tad up here. Now, we're gonna add our highlights. So we're going to use 299. I'll tell you, I usually keep um, two of those sticks going at the same time so that I don't have to um, stop and get another one sharpened up. And my 276 puff. Start with the buff and add little hairs on the top. Switch to the gray. And you want to vary the direction you want to make sure it goes in the direction of the fur, but you want to vary the direction of the um, fur. Now, I don't like this spot in here. There's too much color. And so I can take my charcoal pencil. I could take my black pastel pencil too. I like um, to use the charcoal pencil for this. I can kind of pull a couple of black hairs in there and take care of some of those areas where the pastel is kind of clumped together, okay? And then I'm gonna take my white Here. 
You can also use your um, white charcoal pencil. Make sure it's nice and sharp. And let's go back up, work our way up the top of the ear with our 276. Now, do you see here where it got a little bit too bright? I can use my graphite pencil just to take that off. That works real well. Again, I can add some black here. It just works better with this. And my pencil. Now we'll work around this side. with my 276. Now these highlight colors, I use a lot of them. I buy them by the box full because I'm gonna use them in most every painting that I paint. You'll find colors that you like that may, you know, that work for you that may not be the same as the colors I use, but that's okay. I'm going to lightly blend those there. And we're going to work up the ear. And then it's black. Black hair comes out this way. I want a few white hairs. So I'm just going to zigzag this in to make these hairs a little brighter. And then I want to sharpen my black, the end of my black pastel. And pull some here. Position my wolf. Well, he's looking excellent. So we still have a little time left today. Let's um, get start getting his mask in the mask comes in this area over the eyes and out to the side of the um, wolf's face. Now I'm going to um, do that. I, there's a couple of ways I can do it. In the written instructions, I did it with um, blue underneath the black, and that is a good idea, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I want to kind of map out where I'm going with it. So I'm going to use my dark gray new pastel, or excuse me, Rembrandt, which is 704.3. It's very black. 
or not black, dark. I'm going to sand the end of it. I want a nice flat edge and I always wipe it off because if you don't wipe it off it's going to put all that pastel in your picture. And I want to decide where I'm going to go with this mask, where the darkest area is first. So I'm going to put some just a little bit in here and then You can see my white that I drew in earlier showing up. And over on this side. Well, this just kind of tells me where this is going to be. And I'm just going to put a light layer of this dark gray over the rest of the forehead for now. Then I'm going to take my blue, my 305 spruce blue, and I'm going to work at the blue. Because this is going to be black, okay? Same on the other side. And it comes down and it's going to go out on the side. Now, also at this point, I can see that I'm going to need to add some more brown. It looked pretty dark when we added it the first time, but I'm going to start you know, darkening this up. So I can use the Rembrandt or I can use my Indian Red. This is the 353. Okay, now let me add black. Turn my black over. Use my end. And if you're uncomfortable doing that, just use the point.
I'm using the Rembrandt 538.3. pretty good. If you're new um, to joining us, if you didn't get the get here in the, the beginning, if you um, have questions, leave them in the comments because what happens with uh, the Facebook uh, live is that the questions roll off the screen and I can't see them. So if you'll leave questions, I will answer them at the beginning of the next broadcast on Wednesday while we continue working on our wool. I'll answer those questions. So I'm going to put the black over the blue. Use the tip of the black to add some color around the eye. It's just like coloring in a coloring book. Remember when you used your Crayolas to just kind of flat color in the colors? That's the same way this is at this stage. Well, he's really, really liking that look. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use the back end on its edge to draw little hairs. Is using my, this is a dark gray. Put that under both eyes. Down the middle of the face. He's really looking good now. Um, I'm gonna use this dark gray underneath his nose. Very nice, very nice. 
anyways, okay. This is uh, black, 229 black. I want to make sure that I don't lose the definition of this mouth. And I'm gonna darken. under here a little bit okay now the other things I see that I want to um, make sure that I don't lose in my drawing because we're almost dark enough to the point this is the this looks beautiful to me because this is what I want it to look like before we're gonna get ready to add those dark hairs. So we need to go a little bit darker. This is my new pastel. I'm just I'm not uh, I'm not adding hair. I'm adding uh, shapes. I'm darkening it but I'm not adding hair. We're going to add hair on Wednesday. It looks good. There is a black area that goes through here in between his eyes. So, I'm gonna take the 700.5 Rembrandt to add some black very lightly, right down the center of his forehead. Very light pressure. I'm pushing that with my finger. It's looking good. Okay, I want some dark. Some black here, so I'm going to add a little bit there. You see the white hairs that are here. I'm going to get under his eyes. That's pretty much, I think, all I'm going um, to do there. Now, when we get together next time, I'm going to add we're gonna add the hair to his face. Um, I want you, uh, I wanna thank you first of all for coming and I would like you to share this with your friends. The um, video will go, uh, I think it will be posted immediately on Facebook once I get offline. And invite your friends to take a look and to join us next time to finish painting this wolf. And if you came in late, just to explain, I have one green eye and one amber eye because wolves have green gray eyes and they have amber eyes. Also, I want you to post your questions uh, in the comments and my helpful assistant, Steve, is going to help me gather those questions and we'll answer them on Wednesday to help you all that I can during this time. And I'm very grateful that you joined me. Ah, a couple of questions I can answer right now. Judy Johnson, great to see you, Judy. I use my rocket camera blower from Amazon to blow stuff off. And I've got some trash over here on the side, so I can just demonstrate by blowing it off. It works really well. 
if you don't rub it in. Another way to get things off is with a piece of masking tape. I've got some little pieces of pastel over here, so I can pull those off with the masking tape. It works really well. So the motto in my class is that we can fix anything, and that's true. We can. There's, we never have a failure. Everything is always, uh, we can fix it. And I can see that this eye is not shaped right. So while I'm sitting here, I'm gonna fix that. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Barbara. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I appreciate you all joining me. Um, I get my paper, uh, this is velour paper, and it comes from high gloss products in New York. Temporarily, they're closed, but you can buy it on Amazon if you're interested in pursuing uh, painting on uh, this surface. So thank you all for uh, joining me. We're kind of at a good uh, stopping point. And I will see you all on Wednesday. Bye-bye.